All right, eighth graders, I wasn't sure if I was going to pull this off, have this mechanism ready to go during my planning period uh, so that I could get the video recorded on time. Uh, but, I, but I did, or I, I got it close to what I wanted it to be uh, so that it was uh, configured in the way I wanted it so that I could share it with you folks today. Now this, again, is the windmill challenge and many groups have started on this after they finish their mechanisms. So just kind of a reminder on mechanisms uh, while we're thinking about it. Here's an example of a sign-off sheet. There I have some uh, high-scoring students. They got all their mechanisms signed off, so they are ready to start this windmill challenge if they haven't done so. Now remember there are two scenarios on the handout. And you'll want to make sure that once you've completed your mechanisms, that you get the handout on the windmill challenge. And it tells you uh, clearly what you need to do for situation A and what you need to do for situation B. I've showed you a couple of examples already now. I've used uh, the chain drive for one, uh, where I had speed and torque constant. And I used uh, bevel gears and a small chain drive uh, for another one where I had speed greater uh, than uh, speed was greater for the input than it was for the output so it had increased power. So I told you yesterday I, I gave you some hints on how to make a tall tower using only one piece of metal and that's this piece of angle bracket down here. Uh, I showed you how to take your existing girder and stand it up uh, on its narrow edge so it ends up making a tower. So the only thing I had to do was use a couple more machine screws and one piece of metal. And what I've created here is a windmill that meets situation A. Uh, speed and torque are constant. I have my uh, sail or blade on the top. The directions call it the sail. I like to call it the blade. And then I've added uh, some meshed spur gears. I used the larger ones so I wouldn't need as many uh, because they needed to go down a ways without the blade uh, hitting the bottom. Now, I use the largest spur gears, so if I wanted to use this windmill uh, for situation B, I would have to have an even bigger gear at the bottom uh, that would show uh, increased torque, decreased speed. So that wouldn't work. If I wanted to use this for situation B, I would have to change the gears that I use uh, so that I have something smaller starting at the top and getting wider towards the bottom. And maybe I'll share that with you in another video. Anyway, there's a few construction things that I wanted to point out on this windmill uh, that I think would be useful for you students uh, when we're working with limited resources. Now, I want you to notice for my drive shafts, if you look straight down here, I have no drive shafts sticking out the back. And what I have sticking out the front is very short. And what I've actually used here is the shortest drive shafts we have. And so sometimes finding the right length of drive shaft is a bit of a challenge. Uh, the way I've constructed this is I was able to get by with the shortest drive shafts, and they are on there solid. Now the way I did that was I moved my two bearings to the inside of my girder. By moving your bearings inside your girder, uh, then you're not losing uh, the thickness of the bearings to the, the drive shaft. Because what you have to do, if you have the, the bearings on the outside of the girder, you need a longer drive shaft to fill those in. If you move them on the inside, then you get by with a shorter drive shaft. Now I had to make sure that the silver collar uh, fit in there and there was no play side to side. So if you see, I have two white plastic washers on each side of the collar, and then I have a narrow uh, spacer. So the spacers, there, there's two, there's at least two thicknesses. Uh, I use the narrower one that is in the kit. And really, once you have this collar in there with the two washers and the spacer, then that drive shaft is solid and it doesn't go anywhere. And if I tilt this a little bit, you can see that I repeated that 
all the way down. Now it does take a bit of dexterity to get those in there. And what I was finding myself doing towards the bottom was I was putting on the washers and spacers before I put in the last bearing. So what I actually did was I put in the bearing on one side and I bolted it up and then I started sliding the drive shaft through. Uh, I, I put the, the washer, the collar, the washer, got the spacer on and then I put the other bearing in place and then I bolted it down to finish that. And then I could tighten the collar up. Now I do want to point out that I also had to put collars on the front of the drive shaft so that the gears don't pull off because those have to stay on there as well. We remember the directions for the windmill challenge say it must be rigid and stable. Now I ran into a problem here when I was constructing this. My fan blade, uh, I had bolted it directly to my spur gear and it was running into the drive shafts and collars on the gears below. So the way I fixed that was I put some spacers in between the spur gear and the fan blade so that uh, it would push the blade out and it would clear those collars. So the reason, one of the reasons I share this example with you is because I tried to use minimal parts because we're really trying to stretch these across six different classes. And so I wanted to point out, remember I showed you how to make the tower by only using one metal piece. And now I've shown you how to use the shortest drive shafts because the, sh the, the shorter ones are the ones that we have a higher inventory in. When you start looking for those longer drive shafts, those come in limited quality quantities. So that's kind of why I was showing you this. But I also wanted you to see a, another mechanism. Here I've used a gear train to, to make a windmill that meets scenario A. And hopefully my next video will meet scenario B. Uh, what mechanism I use, you're just going to have to wait and see. So until next time, good luck.